everyone, and welcome to another episode of SaaS Leaders Lounge Cyber Series, your go-to market for cutting-edge insights into the SaaS, cyber, and AI space. Today in our cyber series, we're thrilled to be welcomed and joined by Lee Capon, the CEO and co-founder of Surrey Data, a security posture management business. Lee, how are you doing and how's your week been? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, very happy to be here about you. Yes, it's been a, a very busy week with RSA around the corner, excited to see how things develop. But you've been able to achieve so much in you know a few years in your career. So I just want to dive into your background, how you got into technology, and we can cover some of your recognition and awards, such as being named as one of the Forbes 30 under 30. Yeah, well, uh, I have uh, I have a unique background. I actually came more of a product side. I had my own business with uh, two friends from the army for about uh, four years. Uh, we built a new business from scratch. Uh, then I decided that I need to go and see a bit more of uh, the corporate environment. So I went to large firms. Uh, in my last role, I was leading uh, NLP-based technologies development for a global firm. Um, and Surrey Data actually started, uh, you know, from uh, working in the industry, understanding uh, uh, a big problem that uh, security is handling. Um, I felt it in one of my projects. Um, one of my biggest projects was actually stuck because of security. Um, I couldn't get the snow. I couldn't get the reason that the business needs something. There is a big uh, budget for it and a need and the security just won't let us continue with that. Uh, and that was the, I would say, the beginning of us uh, learning about Surrey Data. Wonderful. And you spent time at two of the top four consulting firms. And as you mentioned, you were doing a lot of work on NLP, um, AI. In terms of the work you did there, how did that transpire and, you know, complement what you were building now at Surrey Data? It basically helped me understand how large corporations work. We now work with this type of organization. So I got a better inside how to navigate in this very, I would say, a different environment, understand how to create processes, how to run them for the long term, how to bring people into the process, how to drive people, how to make a good process in an organization that moves slow. Um, I think I think startups are a much better environment for me personally. I like to move fast and uh, make things happen faster. So uh, I'm definitely in the right place these days. I agree. And in terms of your award um, as uh, one of the top women in cybersecurity, I'd love to learn a bit more about how that came about and what you were contributing to the industry. <laughs> um, I think that um, it's a lot of passion uh, for making things differently um, and continuous learning. Um, that really what, you know, allows me personally to, to stay at really the forefront of trends and technologies and understand real life problems that, that needs to be solved. Uh, you know, understanding feedback, hearing feedback, I always ask for, for feedback and what people actually think and, you know, not just hearing the good things, but also the real things that bothers them or what doesn't work well. So always try to, um, you know, innovate and, and make a difference. And I think that a lot of good collaboration with peers and, and colleagues uh, really create a lot of uh, opportunities for growth and, and to make things different. So I think they're just part of uh, do what we do. Very nice. And so data is an intelligent posture management platform. and. In your own words, I'd just love to understand a bit more about what you guys are doing in the industry that's slightly different from your traditional posture management platforms and some of the biggest mm -hmm. challenges that your customers are facing and how you're helping them to overcome these challenges. Yeah. So if you think about it, every company in the world we currently use or will use uh, third-party tools, right? Third-party can be the known application that everyone has heard about. Salesforce, Jira, Slack, HubSpot, but it can be different APIs and tokens and service accounts, third parties that are untrusted or unknown. Uh, the business need to adopt this type of solution to do their business, to innovate, to grow, right? If someone from product or R&D or marketing want to take it to do something, uh, they probably won't develop it in-house, but rely on third party. Um, 
This basically dictates the fact that business runs fast, they adopt, they use third parties, but security is, is a bit behind. It takes them time to understand, takes them time to realize, to gain visibility about what is being used, how it is being used. Uh, think about the fact that a, any kind of employee can use credit card, uh, corporate credit card to you know purchase license for a SaaS application. Um, or just use credentials um, and it won't be monitored or won't be um, the risk there won't be flagged to the security team near real time. Uh, what Suri Data brings to the table that is pretty different is that we're not just looking at the posture, we're also detecting and responding to a uh, threat that happened near real time in the environment. It's a runtime security solution that basically can identify um, abnormal activities uh, about any kind of third party that is connected to, to the environment and work with the business owners to um, understand what's the right response and make sure we're preventing um, from this type of risk to come back to the environment. So it's not just flagging risk. Security teams have tons of risks they need to mitigate, right? We know the list, it's an uh, endless one. Um, we respond to them in real time and we also prevent them from coming back to the environment. So it's a com unique combination of posture and detection and response in this world. And as Surrey Data continues to grow, how are you personally driving innovation and growth within the organization? Um, I think everyone in Surrey Data know that um, no is not really an answer. We don't get a no in the company. Uh, it sounds funny, but it actually drives to different questions. It, it's not if, it's always how. How we solve it, what is missing to do it, what we can do to achieve what we're trying to do, what's our goal. It's not if, it's only how. Um, and that gives our, our team the understanding that they can do everything they choose. Uh, they just need to find the best way and the right way to do it. Um, that, that's the state of mind in the company. You know, it makes people think outside of the box, outside the box, uh, be creative, passionate about what they do. Um, and I think that also the way matters. It's not just the result. It's not just the outcome. It's also we measure our success along the way. Um, and I think that makes people feel comfortable and allow them to create ideas and think about uh, uh, different ways to solve challenges or bring in new ideas to the table. And you seem like a leader that really empowers and enables their team. And I guess, especially in a startup where all of your employees are going to wear many hats, you really want people that are treating the business as, as if it's their own in, with that entrepreneurial mindset where they're driven. As you said, there is no, no no's. It's more about how and when. And in terms of your background, I just want to go back a little bit. You talked about coming from a product background. And I guess speaking to cyber founders on a frequent basis, Something that's always important and this is adopting and adapting uh, the product market fit. So as somebody from a product background, I just want to understand how you came to identify what the ideal customer profile looked like and how you was able to obtain product market fit. I know it continues to change, but as of now. Yes, but, you know, we reached to a point where you know it is, it is the right ICP. It comes after a lot of A-B testings um, and relying on data points. It's not, you can just know it by feeling. You have to see the data there. You have to track and monitor and see data points in order to find it. Uh, for us specifically, we did a few A-B testing. We tested different industries and sizes and um, uh, geographies in order to, to realize what's best for, for the company and for the product. Um, and, you know, after seeing a lot of data points and analyzing what we've seen in a few months, we were able to get a decision and you, you, you really feel it. We feel it at the calls, you feel it during calls, you feel it during a conversation, you feel it when you talk about the product and the problem about the, the market. Um, and it's kind of, you know, it's in the sales process, you get to a point where you say, okay. I feel it. Something is easier at this point. Uh, you know, founders are very uh, hardworking. They always want to succeed, but they need to be aware of what the really what really the market thinks about what they build. Uh, so we had to change. We had to think differently. We had to be a different way to tell the story and what the product actually does. Uh, but with enough data points about how people say, and by the way, we analyzed every 
sales call every process we we'll learn from each of them you know it's not just you do a lot of them you take everyone very seriously and you ask tough questions along the way um you know i'm not sure if you're aware of uh, the book uh, the mom test uh the mom test really helps you to understand how to validate uh different ideas so uh there is there is a nice story there but uh that that's too long for now maybe next time uh but i really recommend reading it at least even the short version um and it really shows you how to ask the question what type of ask or question you should ask and uh how to be very um i would say um open minded about what people say and hear the real things they're saying and not just what you want to hear Perfect. And I guess for those that maybe don't understand exactly what you're saying, is this that through customer survey, listening to the voice of the customer, this is what you're talking about? And was there was you conducting pilots at all in the very early days? Yes. Uh, yes. It all talks about the sales process. Eventually, we build something for people to buy and to use. Right. So all the validation testing that I talked about is in front of customers of course customers and prospects right at the beginning is prospect people that you reach out to and then you hear their their thoughts their feedback and learn from their point of view um and yeah we did uh we partnered with a few design partners very early on they helped us shape the product they're aware of it they care about it they want to innovate uh they're missing what we're building otherwise they would not um allocate their time and resources and um i think that was a very important part of the process working with people that actually gave us real life feedback and and told us what they actually think about it very nice and are those people still involved in the business in some way they're all our customers now perfect and in terms of from what I understand, Suridate is really designed to unify and automate security across these applications, as you mentioned, third party. Is there a, a specific focus on risk mitigation, I guess, for those customers? And is it over a short period of time that they can start to see the return on investment there? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, you know, today security teams, they don't have six months to... Uh, to dedicate yeah. to a project and then see nothing or see a little back. Um, you can see the results. You can actually enforce policies in the, in the solution within a few hours. Um, you know, when we start a process, we do a POC, a proof of concept, right? Uh, at the first 30 minutes of the Zoom call that we do, we do the connection and they start <clears throat> searing results. Uh, that's the best that's the best interaction with the customer we see in their own eyes how they're how excited are they and they start they stop talking to us and start drilling down into the into the dashboard and what they can do about it and start processes so that's that's exciting i think that's the best feedback we I, can get i definitely agree that aha moment for the customers where you know mm -hmm. they're looking at the solution and they can see oh there's a 360 view of the digital environment we're able to see and fortify these defenses and just, and as you said, respond to incidents in real time. But just in terms of your customers, is there any specific cases with customers that you're working with at the moment where, you know, they've looked at the solution and it was straight after the POC that was like, yeah, we want to buy the solution right now. How do we move forward? It's always a 10 days process. Um, you see the aha moment at the first meeting, the first 30 minutes. Um, they see things they were not aware of. They all know there is an issue. They all know there is a problem in their environment. They're just not sure how big it is or they don't have any information to drill down and understand what are the actual issues that needs mitigation. Uh, they all get it in these 10 days. They get it in the first two days. Then they bring in more people and more team members and you know stakeholders and uh uh, that's pretty easy for them to see. They're not, they don't have to wait weeks or months to see anything. They really see it within the first 30 minutes of the um, onboarding. And as a founder, how important would you say it is for the business to have, you know, client referrals and internal champions, especially when you're, you know, trying to build a company from the ground up? Do you mean in the sales process or uh, like having a champion that is? Yeah, yeah. In, in, throughout the sales process, you want an, a, a champion for the, for the organization, but also in the long term, once they've used the product for a year and they're happy with it, 
to have them refer you to other CISOs and people within their network that may benefit from the solution. Okay, so, so two things. Of course, the referrals are the best, best sales um, enabler that can be, right? Uh, CISOs, you know, they always have their group. One, one of them say good things about you and the rest of them will just want to test or try or, or be in touch. So this is really the best thing that can happen at a startup like us. Uh, it happened to us when one of our customers here in uh, New York invited us to present in their group of 20 CISOs. We basically, they asked them, they did, barely sp spoke with us. They spoke with them, asked them, what did you do? What did you do? How you did it? What was the, the result? What you were able to do with the product? Who were involved in this? How long it took you? He literally just asked them um, and they were able to share from their experience. So it's the best thing. And I think that stakeholder in the sales process is a very, very important thing, but it's not the only one. You need to have a stakeholder, but also the decision maker in the process. If you don't, if you're missing one of them, the odds to, you know, the, the chances you will win the deal will be lower. Uh, so you have to have someone that cares, that will push internally, but you have someone that eventually will sign the deal as early as possible in the process. That's the thing about SaaS. Right. Uh, the, the challenge or the gap is that business owners want to move fast, but security teams need to make sure they have control and they're putting in the, the right controls there. Um, what we did is we developed a communication channel uh, between the security teams and the business owners. So they're able to uh, kind of automate the process of getting business justification. Uh, by doing so, they're able to, the security team is able to get information from the business owners before they take any action. It's very intuitive. It works very fast. So they can make decisions very easily based on the business user that respond to the uh, um, workflows or communication workflows they started with. And for you, as, as the business owner of Surrey Data or, or co-founder, how important is user interface and experience for your customers? Because obviously they want to be able to go into the dashboard and within three or four clicks kind of solve the problem or see where the problem is and identify it very quickly. The ease of use is the most important thing, right? Uh, the colors need to be to look nice. The dashboard needs to be to look nice, but the, um, uh, the experience is the most important thing. Uh, how easy it is for them to do what they want to do. We need to understand before they understand what they're planning to do. Uh, so the right buttons will be up there. The workflows will be easy to communicate, not too many switches between screens. Um, so it, it's important just because it makes it easier for them to take action and um, we want it to be easy for them. So they will be very active. And sorry, Data recently gained recognition in the cloud report for cloud security ar architecture and that acknowledgement helps to validate Suradata's approach. What does it mean for you and the future of the company where you can have these accolades very early on in the growth period? So it means a lot because it shows that someone did any kind of validation, right? Drill down into the technology, the, the messaging, the market, the, uh, the customers, uh, the team, the problem. Uh, it gives a good, very good or strong validation that there is something here about this company, about the product, right? So it helps pushing. Uh, it's very, the security market is very noisy. So it's always good to have this type of recognition that we can uh, put it on, you know, in front and, and tell people that someone has checked it. So they're not feeling that they are the one that taking the risk, but someone have already validated, tested, seen the result, the technology, drilled down into it and uh, basically learned what's behind there. Uh, so it gives them some quiet and it makes it easier, you know, always working with startup companies, it's, uh, it's, it's a risk, right? Uh, it's always easy to get uh, the more known vendor, but probably solutions that are less a good fit. Um, so when we have this kind of validation, it just makes the sales or the entire process much easier. And it definitely helps the customers to kind of feel connected and build trust with the organization very early mm -hmm. on. And as a, a leader, leading figure within the security industry, how important was it to have a co-founder early on when you was building the business? And what would be any advice you have to aspiring entrepreneurs? I think that's, I, I can't find a word to describe how important it is, really. 
Um, it's a long journey. It's a marathon. Uh, you need someone that will think with you, challenge you. You can ask and talk about anything. Um, I think it is super important to have someone with you just because, you know, it's always a question. What's the right next move? What we should do tomorrow versus what should we do in a year? Find the right people around you. you can, there's so many things to do. As you mentioned, you do everything at the very early stage. Um, and when it's yours, um, you always invest more. It's basically becoming uh, the most important thing in, uh, in your life at this period. Um, and when you have someone in this with you, you basically talk the entire day, every day you share your thoughts and you connect and you discuss about things that are not always uh, happy or good. Um, and I think it's a long journey that is full of uh, ups and downs. Um, and having someone with you is a safe place where you can just, you know, grow and support each other. So um, it's very important. Perfect. And as we move towards the quick fire question that we have on our podcast towards the end, I just want to start by asking you, what would be your favorite book on cybersecurity if there's one that you're reading? Ah, uh, wow, it's a tough one. Um, I'm more into reading books about uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, so zero to one, that you know, the tough things about tough things. I think these are must, uh, must read books. And of course, the mom test, as mentioned, are very good for early, early stage companies. And for you, what's the most rewarding aspect of being an entrepreneur? Most rewarding. Uh, it's very satisfying. You're building something from scratch. That's the best thing that uh, someone can do, in my opinion. A lot of people don't don't think so, but uh, you're basically building uh, your dream, what you've always imagined, and you see it every day uh, grow and succeed, and people actually use it and and makes a change in their day to day. Uh, I think satisfaction is the really number one you can get out of it because you have to be crazy to to, to start this journey, right? Um, you have to have something that is, is not usual, something that is unique, uh, uh, believing that you can change uh, it, something small in the world. Uh, really, you need to have a lot of passion. And I think that seeing uh, how it grow and um, and becoming a big thing, that's the most satisfying thing in the world. As you said, helping others to solve their problems, but more importantly, helping the next generation of practitioners to make their job easier is, you know, definitely something as a, fa a founder in a security space, something that you aim to achieve. And if you could have dinner with one cybersecurity expert, who would it be? With the one cybersecurity expert? Wow. I'll do it with George Quartz for sure. Amazing. And <laughs> what is something you would love to change if you could go back in time? I wouldn't change anything. I think nice. that, yeah, it's really hard to, you know, when you get a decision at a certain point of time, it looks right. Uh, I think what's important is to understand if something doesn't work, change or find the right way to do it. Um, regretting about things is not, it's not my thing. I understand it's kind of following on from everything happens for a reason, that kind of mindset, I guess. Yeah, something happened, even if it wasn't a successful one, good things can come out of it. So, I agree. And the question I have from our last guest, we have a tradition as on this guest, on this podcast, sorry, is to share a question from guest to guest. And his question is, could you clarify particularly challenging aspects of being a founder in the early days that you've personally experienced? So the very early days are very confusing. Um, there's no book. There's no right way to do it. Every company is different and the industry is different. I think the most challenging thing for us was to understand what's the next thing we should invest in. You do a lot of things. You're involved in any aspect of the early days. Um, and the most challenging thing was to, invest, to decide where you want to invest your time. Time is the most precious resource. Understanding where you should focus because you can be drilled into different things that are, might not be the top or the most important thing to do. Decide how you uh, divide your time and where you're investing your resources and your thoughts and your your attention. That's that's basically what's the best, the most important challenge. And I think that taking every month, 
30 minutes to think about it and, and look at the calendar and see if I invested my time where I, I plan to. Um, that was the thing that helped me personally. Thanks for sharing. So you, you planned month by month to give yourself kind of realistic objectives to achieve and make sure that you weren't kind of planning too far ahead, but just seeing mm -hmm. how the business grew. And what would be a question that you'd like to share for our next guest? I think that the question would be related to, I'm not sure what their stage is going to be, right? But any thoughts about hiring in first hirings in go-to-market? I think that was a challenge for us. Um, how do you find the right um, or the right first person for the go-to-market team? Uh, it's a very challenging task. There are so many people with such great experience, but identifying, I would say, the... Uh, the right profile or the right team member, that's something that we invested a lot in. And when I talked to a lot of other founders, I found it as a big challenge for every company that has their first hiring of go-to-market person. So I'd love to hear any thoughts on this. Definitely. If you tune into the next episode, I'm sure you'll hear the answers there. But it is, from my experience, talking to founders, a, a pivotal moment for them when they're building up their go-to-market team. And I guess... Mm -hmm. Often the concern is they want somebody that would have some experience in a startup so they understand the fast paced environment and you know that they're not going to have all the resources available that you would have in a 5,000 plus company. So a, a mixture of experiences are always good, but you kind of have a, a benchmark of what you're looking for and there's some flexibilities there. But just before we wrap up, um, I just wanted to find out where listeners can learn more about Surrey Data and if they want to get in touch to learn more about the product, how do they do so? Mm -hmm. Sure. So they can reach out to um, any of us through the LinkedIn or through our website. Um, and like two areas where you can learn about. And is there a demo on the website for, you know, potential customers if they wanted to dive into the product a little, a little deeper? Um, no, but we can send over if they request. Perfect. And are you going to be at RSA with the team next week? Yeah, sure. We even have a booth, so uh, happy to meet uh, everyone's there. Exciting times. And are you going to be checking in on the Innovation Sandbox competition as well? It's going to be a tough, uh, tough uh, schedule during this week. I'll try to do, uh, to, to, you know, to attend the most uh, events, but it's going to be challenging. So we'll have to see. <laughs> I, I totally understand. Well, I want to thank you, Lee, for joining us. It's been more than a pleasure having you, sharing your insights and sharing more information about what Surrey Data is doing in the market. For everyone listening, I hope you enjoyed the session. And if you want to reach out, you will find it in the bio below. But Lee, you enjoy the rest of your week. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll speak soon. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure and we'll be in touch soon. Anytime. <laughs>